Hearing is the child's most important sense for developing spoken language. And the sixth sound test is one of the most important ways that we can make sure that they are hearing as well as they possibly can on a day-to-day -day basis. She's so much more responsive. She talks to us all the time. She's always singing and laughing and pointing at things. And Itsy Bitsy Spider. If he is not even looking at me, I go, mm, 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 mm. and that's all he needs. And he's he's right there, and he's all excited. Now it, it, we're able to do it, do the sound tests quick enough that um, it's just a part of our our routine. For children with hearing loss, possibly the most important thing that we can do is make certain that they have the best possible access to sound through their amplification. One of the ways that we do this is called the Ling Six Sound Test. The Six Sound Test is a way to make something that is invisible visible. Hearing is invisible, and yet what we're trying to do with children with hearing loss is make them really active listeners. So the first thing that the Ling Six Sound Test can do is be a way of making that act of hearing visible. The second thing the Ling Six Sound Test can do, in addition to just helping us make sure that the child is hearing what they need to hear, is it can help parents be confident that their child is hearing. And this assists them in placing more emphasis on the child's hearing as a mode for learning language. Oh, and the indoor playground, is it a really big playground? A huge. The Six Sound Test was developed by a man named Daniel Ling and it covers all of the frequency ranges of speech from very low frequency sounds like mmm to very high frequency sounds like ss. The six sounds are oo, ah, e, sh, s, mmm. When we present children with these sounds in a structured way, we can tell whether they are hearing everything they need to hear to best support spoken language. This is a test that can be done by parents at home. It can be done by school staff in a parent's educational setting. It is a test that is fairly fast, it's fairly portable, and it can really be a great support in making sure that children are making the best use of their amplification. When preparing to do the six sound test, either at home or in a school environment, the most important thing to keep in mind is that the environment must be as quiet as possible, and keeping visual distractions to a minimum is also important, regardless of the age of child with whom you are working. The six sound test progresses from detection, which means I hear something and children do something to let us know that they hear something. Good job! Yay! Oop, it goes. Here comes another. So with a very young child, that might mean we are out of the child's range of vision and we go shh, 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 and the child might still. Or the child might search. You can good job, good job, sweetie. For older children, the detection task can be done simply by having them hold something to their ear, wait for a sound, and put that something either in a puzzle piece or drop something in water, an activity that's interesting. This is the detection phase of the sound, I hear something. We go from the detection phase into the identification phase and at that point the child can tell you what they hear. This is a big step and it's quite important. So not only do I hear something, but I know what I heard. This phase of the test, this way of doing the test, is quite useful for children who do not yet have clear enough speech to accurately repeat the six sounds. The Ling Six Sound Test is very important to do with children of all ages. But very young children, particularly children under two years of age, may not be able to do it in the structured ways that you have seen. 
it's still important to introduce these sounds to children at a very young age. The way we do this is, first of all, making sure that we are using the idea of a quiet environment and the idea of coming out of quiet with a sound. Very young children, even if they can hear a sound, really must be captured by the sound. So for children, very young children, even if they hear a sound, they may not respond to it unless it's interesting. And so we come out of quiet. We have them doing some sort of a very quiet task. Maybe they're playing on their own, not with blocks, not with noise-making toys, probably softer toys, maybe soft books. After about 10 seconds of quiet, with very young children, I present the sound in an interrupted pattern. I will say, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> the reason I use an interrupted pattern is that for very young children, it's unusual, and they're much more likely to respond to it. The first response you will see with children who are very young, under six months old, sometimes is just a stilling response they will stop doing something they're doing. They might stop sucking on a pacifier or a bottle. They might just stop moving. So we look for a stilling response with very, very young children. For a child who's three and older, they are often quite ready to do the detection task. And that detection task usually involves the child having some kind of toy, holding the toy to the ear, waiting, and then doing something with the toy. <laughs> there are a number of ways that we can do this test. When we use the speech screen to do the six sound test, we can be sitting beside the child approximately two to three feet away. We want to make sure if we're using a speech screen that the child really can't see any movements on our face. It's quite important that we are certain that the reaction you see is reaction to sound, not to some movement of your face. The other way that we frequently do this task is we have the child seated comfortably in a chair and we are about three feet behind that child. Uh, hi. Oh man, what a good listener you are. This makes certain that the child is not getting any visual information at all. It sometimes takes a while to teach the child to do this task in this way, and sometimes it really helps if there are two people there to do it. So this is a task for moms and dads to do together. It's also really something that older siblings can help with to model and demonstrate. The most successful way of doing the six sound test at home it would probably have to be with two people. Stop this! And listen. Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> How perfect was that? Huge! Um, either myself or his dad would get, would get in front of him, um, and, and the other one get behind him. When it is just one of us, um, it, is, it is pretty difficult. Um, in all honesty, we have we have a, a pretty big TV, and we kind of use that as a reflective surface to see if he actually is if his if his eyes go go towards our sound. Ideally, we get the child to go through all six sounds at least once, and it's even better if we can get them to do it twice. E. If the child's ready to do this and able to do it well and has had good teaching for this, this really only takes about five minutes to do. It's a really good idea to have activities and toys that you use only for this activity so that the child's motivation will be kept fresh. Yay! Good job! Pop it! Make it's it important when doing the six sound test to make it less possible for the child to predict what you're going to say and when you're going to say it. 
So it's important that you vary the wait times in between each sound that you give. And those wait times would be varying from one second to three or four seconds. But you need to change those times so the child doesn't get into just a habitual response set. The other thing that's very important, uh, particularly in the identification task where the child is telling you what they hear, it's very important to vary the order that you present the sounds in so that the child can't guess just by the order in which you present them what the sound is. Once the child is really used to doing this and we're doing it particularly at identification level where the child is able to repeat the sound, it becomes part of their daily routine, like brushing their teeth. The hearing aids go on, the cochlear implants go on, we walk them through the six sound test, it takes about two minutes and we have that assurance that their equipment is working well. One of the most important things that the six sound test can help us do is to identify a progressive hearing loss before it might otherwise be obvious. So if your child is accustomed to doing the six sound test as part of their daily routine and your child is very familiar with the test and you are familiar with how that child responds, if this child suddenly is not responding to some of the quieter sounds, especially like s or sh, and that happens two or three times in a row, that is a really strong signal that you want to, first of all, check to be sure all the amplification is working well. And then, once you're sure it's all working well, you want to make sure that you're calling their child's audiologist just to be certain that the hearing has remained stable. Many parents detect progression in their child's hearing loss in this way before their audiologist finds it. For children who have multiple involvements, who have motoric limitations, who have cognitive limitations, the Link 6 sound test may take more time uh, for the child to establish a consistent response, but it may also still be the most important indicator of how well the child hears. It's really important when we're doing the six sound test to make sure that they have stable seating, comfortable seating, so that they really can focus on the sound that's being presented. For some children, they might even be lying down to do the test. In this case, the test would take two people one to be standing behind the child and one to be watching the child's face to make certain that there's a consistent response. The wait times in between presenting sounds might be longer for children who have multiple involvements. Mm. The detection response for many children who have multiple involvements frequently is a stilling response or smile. They may even search. Some children may not have enough head control to search. Ah. Frequently doing the six sound test with children who have these kind of involvements is best done with two people because of this. For children who have very severe motoric involvements and have very little control over their limbs, the eye gaze task can be one way to move the child from detection to identification. When they get to the point where they can consistently look at the picture of the sound that we say, we can move them forward into that identification task even if they are not able to repeat it verbally or if they are not able to point to a picture with their fingers. Sometimes it's also important to work with the people who are providing seating support for children who are using amplification because we have to make sure that the way their heads are positioned and supported does not interfere with their amplification. It takes a team to be able to successfully figure out 
how to do an effective sick sound test with a child with complex needs, but it can be done and it should be done. We've reviewed the importance of the sick sound test, the importance of always having a quiet environment when we do the sick sound test, the importance of making sure that your child's amplification equipment is working before we do the sick sound test. We've talked about the test's progression from the detection phase, where children are letting us know they've just heard something, all the way to the identification phase, where children can tell us what they have heard, either by pointing to a picture or by actually saying the sound. We've talked about different ways that we can do the test using a speech screen or standing behind the child and the importance of using conversational loudness of speech to do the sick sound test. The importance of coming out of quiet for very, very young children, looking for a stilling response. Even when children are very young, we can start using the sick sound test to make sure that they're hearing. We've talked about how the sick sound test can act as a way to make the invisible act of hearing visible and how powerful that can be in terms of helping the child to become an active listener and also in terms of helping the parents trust that the child is hearing and trust that they can speak to their child and that their child can develop spoken language through the sense of hearing.